Located in the Mad River Valley, Sugarbush competes with the top echelon of East Coast mountains. It's sometimes overshadowed by more commercialized resorts elsewhere in the state, but it stands out with a much more scenic and natural feeling vibe than many competitors. So is Sugarbush's character worth the drive to get there? Well, in this video, we'll go through Sugarbush's overall mountain experience, and then we'll go through how the resort stacks up in our overall rankings. If you find this information helpful, be sure to like this video and hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our content. And if you want to see more exclusive tips on planning the ultimate ski trip, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, all of which are linked in the description below. The first thing to note about Sugarbush is that it's not one continuous mountain. Instead, the resort consists of two distinct areas, Lincoln Peak and Mount Ellen. While miles apart from one another, both areas are sufficiently sized for most visitors to be satisfied spending a single day at one or the other. While it might initially seem logical to split your days evenly between the two mountains, most guests will probably find themselves wanting to spend more time on the bigger and more interesting Lincoln Peak side. If you only have one day at Sugarbush, Mount Ellen will probably be better for beginners, some families, and freestylers, while Lincoln Peak will probably be better for everyone else. The Mount Ellen area, previously known and still referred to by locals as Sugarbush North, is really just one peak. This side has a lot of nice green and blue cruiser trails and feels quite local thanks to a lack of buildup at the base. While not as geared towards experts as Lincoln Peak, Mount Ellen does offer some fantastic steep, mogulie runs, especially at the top. The Lincoln Peak area, which was previously the whole of Sugarbush way before the resort acquired Mount Ellen, is what most guests will consider the primary side of the resort. This side actually includes three mountains, Lincoln Peak itself, Castle Rock Peak, and North Lynx Peak. They're all accessible from the same base area, although the peaks are very far away from each other, so upper mountain areas are uniquely spread out. This side offers a really nice range of intermediate to expert terrain. For beginners, the Lincoln Peak side of the resort doesn't have that many options. If you're not yet comfortable with harder terrain than that, you'll need to stick to the Gatehouse Pod, which is home to the only green run on this side of the resort that isn't in a learning area. We will at least say that when it comes to the Lincoln Peak learning area, the Village Quad Bunny Hill Lifts does serve some pretty cool trails as far as greens go, including one run that swings through condos. The Mount Ellen side is much better for beginners, with options that extend to mid-mountain, although green runs are still somewhat limited compared to Vermont destinations further south. Sugarbush really starts to flaunt its strengths at the intermediate level. The Gatehouse and North Lynx areas on North Lynx Peak offer some really nice intermediate terrain, including glade runs. The Super Bravo area on Lincoln Peak and North Ridge on Mount Ellen also consist of a ton of blue cruisers. With some very small exceptions on North Lynx and Super Bravo, all of these runs are consistently groomed. Upper Mountain Blues, especially the ones off Heaven's Gate, North Lynx, and Mount Ellen's Summit Quad, provide some of the best scenic views in Vermont. Sugarbush stands out even more with its advanced and expert terrain. The trails have well thought out cuts and fall lines, and only a handful ever get groomed, giving them a natural, exciting feel missing from many resorts further south. Across all of Lincoln Peak, but especially off Super Bravo and in upper mountain areas, visitors will find icy, bumpy steeps, some of which are notably narrow, as well as multiple wooded trails with thick glades. Mount Ellen doesn't have quite as many narrow runs, but there are still some pretty gnarly bump runs in upper mountain areas, including FIS, which is short but Sugarbush's steepest run. It's also worth noting the physically separate lower FIS trail, a steep, ungroomed black diamond run that extends down two-thirds of the resort with no place to bail, and then requires a lengthy catwalk to get out at the end. But the true crown jewel of Sugarbush's expert footprint is the Lincoln Peakside Castle Rock Zone. Servicing black and double black trails only, this area is all natural snow and rarely receives grooming. The incredibly steep, icy, and narrow terrain here will give even the most tenured guests a hard time. These trails are very long as well, so be sure to come mentally prepared. The Rumble Trail, which at times is only about as wide as a hockey stick, is often considered one of the most difficult trails anywhere on the East Coast. But Sugarbush doesn't just stand out for its expert terrain. The resort is home to one of the most authentic vibes of any major Vermont ski resort. On-mountain buildup does exist, but it's limited in nature and thoughtfully done. This authenticity is backed up by natural beauty. 
The resort boasts some of the best inbounds views in Vermont, especially from Heaven's Gate and the top of Mount Ellen, with the spread out nature of upper mountain areas creating a distinctively expansive feel. On cold days, the pine trees up here freeze over, leading to an amazing aura of otherworldliness. Another thing that helps Sugarbush feel special is the feeling of isolation in upper mountain areas. While most Vermont ski resorts offer direct base to summit service on at least one lift, or at least something close to that, at Sugarbush, it takes two lifts to reach every summit area. Especially on the Lincoln Peak side, this effectively separates upper and lower resort areas into different pods of terrain and conveys a vertical feel that's missing from many other competitors. Combined with the lack of man-made distractions, it's easy to feel totally removed from society in Sugarbush's highest elevation terrain zones. Sugarbush's snow quality is good for Vermont, with more reliable accumulation totals than mountains further south. But this is still the east coast, and snow quality at Sugarbush varies throughout the season. Snowmaking keeps parts of the resort resilient, but operations aren't as extensive as at some competing resorts. A sizable portion of expert terrain doesn't have snowmaking and may be closed if you don't time your visit right. If you really want to visit Castle Rock, it's important to note that this expert area often doesn't open until January. It tends to stay consistently open through February and early March, but is often subject to very thin cover. There are also occasions when Sugarbush will technically open Castle Rock's terrain, but without spinning the lift, turning it effectively into a skin-up access only zone. Lincoln Peak and Mount Ellen may be miles apart from one another, but there is on-mountain transportation between the two, the Slidebrook Express, and it's very much worth a mention. Only open on days with what the resort claims is sufficient snow cover, this two-way lift traverses through two miles of what's basically complete wilderness and offers some of the most beautiful scenery of any ski resort experience in the state. Taking this lift consumes a notable part of your ski day, and the isolation and vertical drops can get scary at times. However, it's well worth doing this lift at least once. For many, this lift is unique enough to provide a once-in-a-lifetime ski resort experience. And yes, we know, that is crazy to say about a resort on the East Coast. While it used to only run on weekends and holidays, as of the 2022-23 season, the Slidebrook Express runs daily once conditions are sufficient for operations. It's also worth noting that Slidebrook Basin, the area below this lift, is home to more than 2,000 acres of wooded backcountry skiing. On a good day, these untouched glades can be truly amazing. You can access Slidebrook from the top of the North Links Triple Chair and make your way to a bus stop at the bottom, but it is easy to get lost in the thick woods. If it's your first time, you'll want to sign up for one of Sugarbush's paid guided tours or find a local who knows the area well. And given this is backcountry, you'll want to go in with all the proper gear including a beacon and shovel. When it comes to the rest of its lifts, Sugarbush's setup isn't bad, although it's not the most modern. However, this is partially by design. Detachable, high-speed quads provide service from the bases to mid-mountain areas, and in the case of the Mount Ellen side, the North Ridge Express Quad extends about three quarters of the way up. Only fixed grip lifts service the peaks, and some of these are difficult to find or require brief flat terrain sections to get to. These lifts may be slow, but their lower capacity allows for less crowded slopes at the top. This is especially true on Castle Rock's double lift, which has extra wide spacing between chairs. Fewer crowds, combined with the lack of noise from the lifts, greatly contributes to the sense of isolation you'll feel up on these peaks. However, while the slopes may be spread out, lines at the low capacity Upper Mountain Lincoln Peak lifts, which have no direct alternatives, can get bad. The lines for the Castle Rock lift don't always look too long, but they move really slowly, and half-hour waits are super common on weekends and holidays. The out-of-base Super Bravo lift is somewhat of a crowd magnet as well, although luckily, the nearby fixed grip Valley House Quad provides relief when needed. It's worth noting that for late 2023, Sugarbush is redesigning its Reverse Traverse Trail, which will make it much easier for guests taking the Valley House lift to get to upper mountain areas. Crowding is typically less of an issue on Mount Ellen, Helped by several lift redundancies, the area's smaller size, and the lack of a built-up base and on-site lodging. It's worth noting that Sugarbush is a member of the Icon Pass, with unlimited access on both the full and base products, albeit with holiday blackouts on the base options. If you don't want to commit to a specific date, but want to secure your access ahead of time, Sugarbush is also a partner on the two, three, and four-day Icon Session Passes. Sugarbush is located in central Vermont's Mad River Valley, about three and a half hours from Boston and five and a half hours from New York. 
The resort is also about three hours from the Canadian city of Montreal. The final hour or so of the drive from any direction involves state roads that aren't always well maintained, so visitors should make sure to bring the proper vehicle on their trip. One downside that Sugarbush shares with many other Vermont mountains, public transportation options and shuttle services from major cities are essentially non-existent. Although it doesn't really have the same sprawling base village as some competitors, Sugarbush's Lincoln Peak area does offer some solid on-site lodging options. The Claybrook, which is the resort's only slopeside hotel, is quite upscale but expensive. Trailside condos with ski-in, ski-out access are more reasonably priced for the space, but not all of them have amenities like pools or hot tubs. There's no on-site lodging available on the Mount Ellen side. A range of charming bargain basement to luxury condo rental options exist within a few minutes of the resort. If you're looking to stay somewhere cheap, consider Hostel Tavere, a shared room hostel a short drive from the mountain that features an on-site bar and restaurant. Sugarbush offers some enjoyable opera ski options, but the nightlife is somewhat limited compared to some other Vermont resorts. Both base areas feature slopeside bars with good beer selection and live music during peak times. There are some pretty solid bars in the town of Warren, and they can be accessed via the free Mad River Valley shuttle bus if you don't want to drive. However, you won't find any true nightclubs here if that's your vibe. So Sugarbush may not be for you if you're looking for the fastest lifts, most consistent opening schedule for expert terrain, or a singular, continuous footprint to ski or ride on. But the resort really has quite a lot to offer versus the other options in this state, and it can be well worth the trip if you're looking for diverse terrain, distinctive character, and breathtaking views. But perhaps the biggest downside to Sugarbush is its price. One day lift tickets are now among the most expensive in Vermont, topping out near $200, and to make matters even crazier, there's no age discount for kids 5 and older. It is worth noting that the Mount Ellenside offers its own midweek lift tickets, and they top out at about half the cost of full Sugarbush tickets. However, they're not available on weekends or holidays. If you want to visit Sugarbush this winter, we recommend skipping regular lift tickets entirely and going with the Sugarbush Quad Pack, which provides four days of flexible mountain access or an icon offering. If you have kids, the icon products come with the age discounts missing from Sugarbush branded access. However, these products will be off sale later in the fall, so you'll have to act quickly. Now let's go through how Sugarbush stacks up in our overall rankings, which are determined by the following 10 category mountain score. Sugarbush sees strong Vermont accumulation totals and often forms a solid natural snow base during the peak season, earning the resort a 6 for snow. Sugarbush remains reliably open throughout the winter as a whole, but several tougher terrain zones take a while to open, and the Slidebrook lift connecting the two resort sides is quite a fickle beast, and the resort gets a 5 for resiliency. Sugarbush boasts 581 skiable acres, and as per our calculations, 1,657 acres from boundary to boundary, earning the resort a 4 for size. While it may not be the best for beginners, Sugarbush boasts some really characteristic trails and gets a 7 for terrain diversity. Sugarbush is home to some of the hardest terrain on the East Coast, including the experts only Castle Rock Zone, and the resort gets an 8 for challenge. Sugarbush's lift fleet contains about an even mix of high speed quads and slower, fixed grip chairs, and the resort gets a 5 for lifts. Sugarbush gets pretty packed on weekends, although it's not as bad as several prominent competitors, and the Mount Ellen side rarely sees notable weights, earning the resort a 6 for crowd flow. Sugarbush has a handful of modestly sized mid mountain lodges and gets a 5 for facilities. While it's a lengthy ride to get between Sugarbush's two terrain zones, the individual Lincoln Peak and Mount Ellen sides aren't the worst to get around, and the resort gets a 6 for navigation. And finally, while it's not the biggest resort out there, Sugarbush offers some of the most personality of any Vermont ski resort and gets a 7 for mountain aesthetic, tied for the highest rating in this category in the state. These categories add up to an overall score of 59, placing Sugarbush 4th in Vermont. Sugarbush isn't the best at everything, but it's got character, and that helps it really stand out in terrain diversity, challenge, and aesthetic versus other in-state competitors. Other resorts may outclass it in on-mountain infrastructure such as lifts, facilities, and snowmaking, but if you're looking for high-quality East Coast slopes, it's hard to do a whole lot better than Sugarbush. For more information on Sugarbush in over 80 North American ski resort destinations, check out peakrankings.com. See you for the next one.